Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is the support of mixed strategies. I cover this in Lesson 3.5 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check the video description for more information about that. Now, this unit is divided into two sections. At the first half of the unit, we talked about games with generalized payoffs, where we could vary those payoffs and see how the equilibrium parameters change as a result of us changing those payoffs. Now, we've done that. We're done with that, we've taken care of it, and we're moving on to the second half of this unit. And in this half, what we'll be talking about is how to generalize mixed strategy Nash equilibrium into a much broader context. So why is that? Why haven't we done that before? Well, every single game that we've seen with a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium so far has been a two by two game. So this is the example that we've been using for the last couple of videos when we've been talking about comparative statics. In this game of penalty kicks, there's a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. We used the mixed strategy algorithm to find that. We're very good at using the mixed strategy algorithm to find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of games like this, these two by two games, but not all games look like this. There are some games with a lot more strategies. For example, Rock, Paper, Scissors is a classic game. I'm sure all of you have played it at some point in your life. And that's the game right there. There are three strategies for each player, rock, paper, and scissors. The payoffs are listed as you see there. And if you stop for a moment and think about this, you should be able to reason to yourself why there aren't any pure strategy Nash equilibria and why the only Nash equilibrium of this game involves mixing among all three of those strategies. Now, if that isn't intuitive to you right now, that's fine because we're actually going to solve this game formally in a few videos from now. But in order to be able to do that, we actually have to be able to talk about how a player can and can't mix among two or three or four or five or six or however many strategies. And so this video is going to be the first shot in that direction where we're talking about what the support of a mixed strategy is. So let's start with the definition here. A pure strategy is in the support of a mixed strategy if the mixed strategy places positive probability on that pure strategy. So the support essentially references all the pure strategies for which this holds. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in the two by two games, this is very straightforward. So again, going back to the penalty kicks game, the striker kicks left with probability one over one plus X and kicks right with probability X over one plus X in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, both of those numbers, one over one plus X and X over one plus X are positive numbers. The striker some of the time will be kicking left and some of the time will be kicking right. Both of those things are happening in this mixture for the striker. Now, in contrast, if we look at player two strategies here in this hypothetical strategy that I just came up with for rock, paper, scissors, player two will be playing rock with probability one half, and she'll be playing paper with probability one half, and she'll be playing scissors with probability zero. So in other words, she's never playing scissors. She's playing rock some of the time, and she's playing paper some of the time, but she's not playing scissors ever. And so as a result, scissors is not in the support of this mixed strategy, but rock and paper are. Now, why do we care about the support of a mixed strategy? Well, it's actually very important when we're looking at mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So in any mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the expected utility for each pure strategy in the support of the mixed strategy must be equal. Now, we've been implicitly doing this all along when we've been looking at the mixed strategy algorithm because we've been setting these sorts of expected utilities equal to one another to ensure that this property holds. So, for example, when we solved for the goalies mixed strategy, we assured that the kicker's expected utility for kicking left is equal to his expected utility of kicking right. Then we found the expected utilities for each of those. We set them equal to each other and solved for the probability that made that happen. So we ensured that there was this sort of indifference there by using the mixed strategy algorithm. That's how you actually create the mixed strategy algorithm if you were to do this uh, all over again by yourself and having never learned these sorts of tricks in the past. But that just only works for this two strategy case. What happens when we get into a more complex situation? Well, we'll take care of that in future videos, but for now, let's just quickly prove why this must be the case. So again, in any mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the expected utility for each pure strategy in the support of that mixed strategy must be equal. So why is that? Let's just do a quick little proof to understand why that has to hold in a mixed strategy, uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So to show this, let's instead suppose that it's not the case and prove this by contradiction. So if that's not the case, then some strategy X must produce less than a strategy Y in the support of the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. If there is a strategy that 
is not equal to the other strategies as this requires. So if this doesn't hold, then that means there has to be some difference in those expected utilities, and we're going to make x just be worse than another one. So x is the worst of all of those if you want to do it that way. All right. So remember that a Nash equilibrium is a set of strategies for which no player has a profitable deviation. But this is a problem here because if I'm supposed to be playing strategy X some of the time in this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, well, I'm getting something worse than I would be getting if I just played Y instead. So instead of playing X whenever my mixed strategy told me to play X, I could just replace that with Y. So if I was rolling a die and playing X if it came up on 1 and 2, and Y if it came up on 3, 4, 5, or 6, I could instead just, instead of playing X on 1 and 2, I would just play Y instead and essentially play Y all of the time. And that's going to be a profitable deviation for me because instead of getting X some portion of the time, I will get the value for Y all the time, and that's better for me than getting this worse value x some of the time. And so that's a profitable deviation, which means it's not a Nash equilibrium, which means, well, we've proven this by contradiction. So I think this is fairly intuitive if you think about it, and that's the general idea for why that's the case. If you go back and you play with any sort of mixed strategy in a 2x2 two two game, and you change those probabilities by just a little bit, and you can see that this will play out in a very similar way, where if, as soon as you start mixing or changing those mixtures, even in the slightest way, you have a lack of indifference, which means you don't have this equilibrium condition and you have a player always wanting to play one strategy all the time instead of being willing to mix between the two of them. Now, the last thing to note in this video is that in any mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the expected utility for each pure strategy not in the support of the mixed strategy must be less than or equal to the expected utility for each pure strategy in the support. So this is intuitive, again, if you pause it and let that sink in for a moment. But why is that the case? Well, if another pure strategy produced a better outcome than a mixed strategy, then why mix? So if I have three strategies, X, Y, and Z, and I'm supposed to be playing Y and Z in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, but X is paying me better than that mixture Y and Z, then it makes no sense for me to play Y or Z when I can play X and just do better all the time. So X is always better for me, Y and Z is always worse for me, so I'm never going to want to play those Y and Z strategies, I'd only want to play X. So if we're looking for a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, then this condition must hold as well, otherwise there's a profitable deviation and therefore we don't have a Nash equilibrium. So that is the support of a mixed strategy in a nutshell, the very few things that you need to know to actually be able to use these things helpfully, and we will be moving forward by taking these sorts of rules and applying them to games, and we're going to start out with a neat little trick you can use for weak dominance in the next lecture. So uh, that wraps up this video, and I hope to see you in that ne next lecture. Take care.